Good afternoon, Mets fans, and welcome to a Monday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, a little bit tardy this morning, this afternoon now, actually. Um, got off to a late start this morning, and uh, kind of like the Mets, um, was unable to come back uh, and, and secure a victory until the afternoon. So, uh, I want to talk about the weekend series with the Cardinals on today's show. Um, disappointing that the Mets dropped two out of three. Um, I also want to talk about the offense and its performance uh, of late, and uh, which is a which is a positive. And uh, then I want to go in the opposite direction and talk about the performance of pretty much the entire pitching staff uh, as we head into another difficult stretch for the 2019 Mets. I made a comment on my uh, Game Balls and Goats post this morning uh, about uh, about living in the upside down, and uh, you know it's apparent that we live in the upside down when, in a three-game series, the best pitching performance by a starter belongs to Jason Vargas, <laughs> um, particularly when one of those three games is also started by Noah Syndergaard. Um, Syndergaard started yesterday, was disappointing uh, again. Uh, his second consecutive disappointing start. Um, second consecutive start in which the offense gave him an early lead and he almost immediately co coughed it back up. Uh, yesterday doing so, putting the Cardinals in front early, uh, a lead that the Mets were never able to eclipse. Um, in the middle of those two games, uh, Vargas being Friday and Syndergaard being yesterday was a, a spot start from Chris Flexen, Chris Flexen, excuse me, um, who got the start because of Jacob Degrom's uh, Tommy John surgery slash strep throat slash um, I don't feel well slash whatever the hell. Um, and I'll get I'll get to the Degrom stuff in a moment, but. Um, you know, the funny thing about uh, about this is that Chris Flexen joins a long list of underwhelming Mets minor league performances. And I, I, it wouldn't be nice if the Mets could just call up an arm from AAA and that arm could actually provide something, uh, anything, um, whether it be a bullpen arm or a, a spot starter arm. Um, they just seem to get so little value out of their triple-A roster, and nothing can help them at the major league level at this point, you know. And it's a shame. It's a real shame because this pitching staff has been overtaxed uh, big time in the young season, and they have no reinforcements who are any good. And uh, that, that's sort of a, a sad state of affairs for this team, which has provided an awful lot of offense but just cannot seem to click that pitching and offense at the same time. It's been a, a recurring theme for this team for a long, long, long time. And this year it's gone in the opposite direction. Now, all that being said, the Mets are still 11 and 10. And they've gotten off to, they got off to a great start, um, five and one, um, but uh, are six and nine in their last 15 since that great start. So that's where the 11 and 10 comes from. Where have we heard this story before? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the only difference is that this year it was, uh, it was not 11 and 1. It was 5 and 1. And I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to throw up the, the panic flag and say this is, you know, 2019 is 2018 all over again. I don't think that's the case. Um, I've said this many times this season already. I, I think this offense is is greatly greatly improved uh, over over the way it had been over the last several seasons and it can sustain losing a bat or two and frankly it has um it's produced i think the third most runs in the national league up to this point in the season and it's done so without two of the pre predicted starting bats in the lineup that being todd frazier and jen lowry um, the reinforcements on the offensive side of the ball have more than held up their own. Uh, J.D. Davis has done more than I think anybody could have expected him to do offensively. We're going to get to defense in a moment. Um, uh, and Jeff McNeil, I mean, for God's sakes, um, Jeff McNeil's like a hitting machine despite taking an over in back-to-back -back days, uh, which is very odd, very, very rare. 
Uh, McNeil over the weekend set a Mets franchise record uh, as the fastest Mets player to get to 100 hits as a Met. Um, eclipsed, uh, I think they said uh, Moises Alou ha held that record before uh, um, McNeil took it. So kudos to McNeil, to the Flying Squirrel, for uh, owning a spot in the Mets history books uh, as a, a really great hitter. But anyhow, uh, I digress. Back to the, the situation at hand. Um, the, the offense has been, been really good. Uh, Todd Frazier is likely to come back tonight um, and be it at City Field for the game tonight. Uh, Mickey yesterday alluded to the fact that he may not be starting. And I think that's the right move. I think that is the smart move. And I think having Frazier be a late-inning defensive replacement for J.D. Davis is a good decision. Um, he can certainly spot start as needed, Ken Todd Frazier. Uh, if you want to get McNeil a day off, um, let Davis play left field or, you know, let whatever, Broxton or Lagares, whichever one of those two doesn't go down uh, um, or get released or whatever after uh, after Frazier comes up. The big question here will be what happens with, uh, you know, that extra spot on the bench that is going to be gone with Frazier's return. And I mentioned Keon Broxton. He might be a possibility to go down. Um, I, the... the I wouldn't touch Dom Smith. He's been pretty valuable in his current role as a uh, as a, bull, a, a backup first baseman and as a pinch hitter. And uh, I think J.D. Davis, too, has been pretty valuable as an offensive weapon. So it's going to be a difficult decision. Perhaps it might be a bullpen arm like Jacob Rehm, who uh, gets sent back to, to Syracuse. But at the end of the day, no matter who they decide to uh, send down, um, I did mention release because Ligaris would have to be released because he doesn't have any options left um, if, if he, they were to choose to part ways with, with someone um, for the Frazier thing. But anyway, um, Frazier needs to be on the bench, and it looks like that's where he's going to be, at least to start. So that's a good thing. Um, I've mentioned defense now three or four times, and it's worth noting that uh, over the last week or so, the Mets' defense has been horrendous. Um, you know, the Steven Matz eight-run first inning game, uh, you can trace the flaw in that inning back to the Ahmed Rosario error in that inning. Uh, yesterday, Ahmed Rosario commits an error. Wilson Ramos has been a passed ball machine behind the plate. I mean, just the, the defense has been so bad. Uh, again, just over the last week or so, it seems to be really snowballing. Um, J.D. Davis defensively is subpar at best. I actually like his glove, but my God, he can't throw. I mean, it's unreal for a guy that is, is legitimately talked about as a potential bullpen arm. Guy just has no arm from third base. And he's got that weird double glove tap thing that he does where he costs himself like a half a second on, on every play. Um, he's made a couple of lollipop throws from third base to second base in an attempt to turn a double play that ended up being a fielder's choice. Um, th you know, these are the sorts of things that aren't errors. But they aren't double plays. They aren't outs that should be made. And those sorts of things lead to longer innings, more pitches being thrown by your starter or reliever who's ever in, and it just ends up taxing your bullpen even more when you start giving away outs. And that's what the Mets are doing with the errors they're committing and with the bonehead plays that they're, that they're making. So the, the defense absolutely has to improve. That being said, We've seen this pitching staff over the last few years um, pick up the defense. And it, it's high time that the defense starts picking up the pitching staff a little bit. That would be great. Um, we've seen the offense pick up the pitching staff this year. Uh, the offense continues to hit. But we have not seen the defense help out the pitchers. And look, the bottom line here is that the Mets pitching staff has been dreadful, top to bottom. I mean, other than Edwin Diaz, there's, there's no one who, to me, right now, uh, Jacob DeGrom aside because he's on the injured list, uh, there is no one in the Mets uh, pitching staff other than Edwin Diaz, who I trust right now, on a day-in and day-out basis. And that's sad. It was really sad. And this is not supposed to be the case. This was supposed to be a greatly improved bullpen. And, you know, the starting rotation, it was supposed to be one of the best in the league, has been anything but. So it's been a frustrating week. Um, and it doesn't get any easier because the Mets return home to open a three-game stand, uh, three-game uh, series, rather, with the Phillies this evening. 
Uh, the Phillies will miss Noah Syndergaard. Uh, they will, however, see Steven Matz and Zach Wheeler and Jason Vargas. The Vargas start... Now, I gotta say, I was expecting Vargas to get lit up by the Cardinals. And he didn't. So, I, maybe I'll just reserve judgment um, and hope that he's allowed to pitch more than four innings. <laughs> but I, I'm not looking forward to Vargas um, facing the Phillies because they have a really good lineup. And it doesn't get any easier after that because the Mets have an off day on Thursday and then Milwaukee comes in for a three-game weekend set next weekend. So it's going to be a, a difficult stretch. We knew this was going to be a tough part of the schedule. Uh, you have to consider the fact that the Mets are treading water. And while they're 6-9 and nine in their last 15, uh, the 5-1 and one start makes that a little bit more palatable. Although, um, we certainly would like them to be, uh, you know, maybe like 8-7 and seven over the last 15 instead of 6-9. and nine, But, you know, better than 5-10, and 10, right? Um, one final thing uh, I want to mention, uh, and it's from yesterday's game. Um, I had, uh, had the game on, was watching it kind of on and off. We had our family over for, uh, for Easter yesterday at our house. And so we watched the first couple of innings and we saw the Alonzo bomb to dead center that the cameraman couldn't even find cause it was hit so high and deep. Um, but, uh, the, um, the umpiring in yesterday's game. So the, the Robinson Cano hit by pitch, but not really. He actually swung and didn't get hit by the pitch. Uh, <laughs> I, I, so I gave uh, the umpire Paul Ellering or whatever the hell his name was, Pat Emmerich or something, I gave him a goat for yesterday because th that call was so bad. I don't understand how replay exists in baseball and a call that is that horrendously bad is not only allowed to happen, but is then allowed to stand. Give me a break. Good for Mickey Calloway getting himself thrown out of the game because that was a bullshit call and it should have been overturned. And MLB needs to start fixing things like this so that we can all look to replay every time it gets annoying and we can look to it and say, yeah, but it fixed something that would have been really, really wrong. And how about the fact that Michael Conforto was robbed of an RBI <laughs> after that, after Cano was lifted from the game, Ligaris has to pinch hit for him and he strikes out. That's Cano's strikeout, by the way. And Michael Conforto follows with a home run. Solo shot. But it would have been a two-run homer. I'm not saying the game would have been different. I'm not saying Conforto would have gotten the same pitches with the base runner on. But it doesn't matter. That changes the complexion of the game, and it cannot be allowed to stand. So that's that. That's off my chest. Final point of the day. Um, Travis Darno. I need to bring up Travis Darno. He's got one hit since returning to the team. His batting average is, I think, under .050 at this point. And I'm wondering how much longer Darno can be allowed to remain on the roster. Um, if he's giving nothing offensively, which, let's be honest, he's giving nothing offensively to this team. Um, I, the only thing you can look at is his defense and or what he's doing to help the pitching staff. And I, I would like to make a proposal that the Mets uh, send Travis Darno down if he's got options. I don't think he does, but um, send him away, uh, release him. I don't think any other team is going to pick him up. Um, let him retire and go join Devin Mesoraco in Pittsburgh or wherever he is. But I think, I think it's time to bring Rene Rivera up. No, not even kidding. I think Rene Rivera needs to be promoted because with Syndergaard struggling like he is, Rene Rivera really had a good, strong connection with Syndergaard. Uh, he was the catcher in the uh, wild card game in 2016 for the Mets um, because he just was, he called such a good game for Syndergaard and he clicked with Syndergaard so well. I think that might be a good step to take that won't cost anything really as far as like productivity. Darno is giving you nothing. So if you're trading nothing for nothing, you're getting nothing, or you're, you're losing nothing, rather, but what you're getting in return is maybe someone who can flip a light switch on for Noah Syndergaard and get him back to form. It'd be worth it to me. It's worth taking a try on that. But anyway, that was my last point for the day. I went on extremely long. I apologize, but it was a three-game weekend set, and I wanted to be sure to talk about it. Um, prepping for the three-game series, which I won't be able to watch because blackout, whatever, uh, I will be listening to the games, and I will be back tomorrow 
to uh, to recap tonight's effort. Um, hopefully, it's a positive one for the Mets' return to City. We shall see. Uh, until tomorrow, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.